Hello and welcome to another Data Fabric tutorial. With the N4 Data Lake as a central repository for your enterprise data, there's great value in being able to automate scheduled incremental extractions to your downstream consumers. The recently introduced NSQL retrieval option in Data Lake Flows unlocks that functionality for you. Let's take a look at this new feature to see how it works and how you can leverage it. First, a quick refresher on Data Lake Flows. These are essentially a sequence of activities that involve sending data into the data lake for ingestion, retrieving data from the data lake, or a combination of the two in addition to other activities such as scripting. More specifically, within the data lake flow modeler, you are able to schedule the retrieval of entire documents from the data lake through the retrieve activity, build specific NSQL queries to schedule the incremental extraction of custom subset of your data through the query activity, or ingest objects directly into the data lake through the ingest activity. To get started, let's first add a data lake flow. We then proceed to add a query step into our data lake flow, and then configure the query by adding it, which opens up the NSQL modeler. Now, if this is your first time interacting with the NSQL modeler, I recommend reviewing earlier videos on the subject. The links should appear on your screen, or you'll find them in the description below. Let's try a quick and easy example here. For this specific example, I'm joining two tables. So first I'm pinning them here so I can see them, and then I can drag them into the middle of my modeler so I can define the connection between them. So first the first table and the second table, and then define the join between them, which is in this case a left join that is based on the product subcategory field here. Next, I need to define which columns I would like to show on my output. I can find the columns that I have here under the available columns and then add them to my selected columns. So I keep expanding the list by adding more columns. You can also select multiple columns at the same time to add them to your selected list. Next, I'll do the same to my other table here. In this case, I only need one column, but since that column has the same name as an existing column, I can rename both columns to be more specific here. Additionally, I can define some metadata properties here, such as the variation and the identifier columns. And once I'm done, I'll click update and refresh my model here to see a preview of the results. You can also preview this in NDJSON format, as well as see the SQL query that was executed as part of this transformation. Next, we'll save, validate the model, and then generate the metadata, which will essentially be your object schema that is stored in the data catalog for this document. Now, before we go back to the data lake flow to finalize it, let's first define the incremental settings for this NSQL model. Under the regular NSQL model, you'll be able to select the specific columns to use and define as your incremental fields, but in this case, we already know the incremental field based on data object storage date. To learn more about how data lake handles incremental loads and how you can take advantage of that, refer to the video shown on the screen or in the description below. Once we're done with the NSQL model, we can simply finalize our data lake flow here and add more steps to it. For example, in this case, I choose to use an SFTP connection point that I've already predefined to store my retrieved objects. Finally, I can further customize the settings of my retrieval activity by adjusting the schedule, and I can also add a filter which allows the exclusion of data older than the specified date. And now, all you need to do is just activate the data lake flow and the data will be retrieved according to the defined schedule. And there you have it. Thanks for tuning in. For more information, make sure to check out the resources linked in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe and turn notifications on to get the latest updates.